Bru Shushu Carrington is going to be stepping back in the ring November 15th on the undercard of the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight. No real surprise that we're getting this one, man. Kind of awesome because anybody who follows Shushu knows that this dude is always talking about his connection to Mike Tyson in the sense that he idolizes the guy, he looks up to him, followed his career. It's because they both came from the same neighborhood, right? So they got that connection and he, he's, he's always trying to build on that and talk about it and everything. So the fact that the man gets to fight on Mike Tyson's undercard is probably like a dream come true. Something that he never imagined would be possible based on Mike's age and his age and the way that he came up and everything like that. So in that sense, it's kind of cool. But I'll tell you, there's one other thing that's that's I, I really like about this whole thing. And it's just from the straight boxing standpoint. And that is the fact that last time we saw... Shushu out there. Wasn't that long ago. It was a couple months. He just fought in September, fought against Sagawa. A little bit, a a little bit underwhelming in that fight. You know, I don't want to go too far. I don't want to make it bigger than it was, but he didn't come out and and have the normal wow factor that we're, that we're, that we're used to seeing from him. I mean, top rank has been building him up for a while, been talking about him for a while for the simple fact that this dude is talented. There's all kinds of things that he can do in the ring. The man has got what it takes. He's ranked highly right now as far as the ranking organizations. All We've got all reason to believe that we'll see him fighting for a world title next year, 2025. As long as everything continues to go according to schedule, that's the track that he's on. So the fact that he put in a little bit of an underwhelming performance in September and all of a sudden we get to see this super quick turnaround and he come back, man, it's like coming going back to the scene of the crime and cleaning up the evidence. We're going to be able to, the last thing that we have in our memory as far as when we think about Shushu is going to be this performance not the last one. So my guess is not only is it the extra motivation of being on the Mike Tyson card, but he's got the extra motivation of wanting all of the conversation about him to continue to be about how good he is and how the future's super bright, not about how, ah, what about that last fight? Oh, what about this? What about that? So I'm I'm thinking that he's going to come out and just shine. And when you look at his opponent man here, Donna Coolwell, you watch this guy fight and I couldn't watch him fight that much. Unfortunately, it's hard to pick up some tape on this dude because of the fact that every single fight except for one has been in Australia. And the, one was, and the one that wasn't in Australia was in Dubai. Now, look, there's all kinds of good fighters that come from all over the places. But if you watch this channel for, for even a little while, you know, the one of the things that I say is once a fighter who's not from America reaches a certain point in his professional career, at this point, we're talking 15 fights for Coolwell. Once you've reached 15 fights in your professional career and no American promoter has attempted to bring you over here, and then all of a sudden when they do attempt to bring you over here, you are clearly the B-side. You are clearly the opponent. This man's not supposed to win this fight. This man is not considered a world-class fighter. This man is not somebody that promoters look at and think, man, that's a guy that I can make a lot of money off of. That's a guy who can go places. That's a guy who's going to be able to beat a lot of people. Boxing is a business. Everybody says it all the time. And what that means is that when these promoters are constantly going to look for the best talent because that's the guy that they're going to make the most money off of. So the, the fact that this dude has been over in Australia, racked off 15 fights, 13 and 2, and he's never been called up until now. And when he is, he's an opponent. He's like a seven, eight to one underdog. He's not going to win this fight, man. This is a fight that is set up for Shushu to look good in. This is a fight where Shushu is supposed to come out and shine and just erase everything that happened in that last one. Okay. But here's what I'm going to be looking at. I fully expect this dude to win, but here's what I'm going to be looking at. Number one, how much is he forcing? Because that's one of the criticisms that I had from him in his last fight is that it felt like he was forcing, particularly his counters. I want to see him use the jab more, but I don't want to see him stand there and box from the outside, right? Because that's what, as a matter of fact, that's what Coolwell is going to try to do. He's a boxer. He's got a really smooth jab on him, comes forward behind it really well, likes to be aggressive, but not too much, build off of that, has some real slick counters that he uses. He's one of those guys that when you watch him, he looks like he does a lot of things correctly, but I just don't think he has that extra gear to be able to continue to go to those next levels. I think as long as you don't really push him, as long as you don't challenge him, he's going to be able to come out there and he's going to be able to look good to maybe pretty good but it's all against the competition that he's in there. So I want to see Shushu get on the front foot. I want to see him be aggressive and back this dude up because this dude is going to want to apply pressure. So I don't want this other guy to apply pressure and see Shushu dancing around on the outside trying to force his counters. I want to see him be aggressive, go forward. I want to see him work behind the jab, but not too much. We're not out here to have a jabbing contest. I want to see him use the jab particularly to set things up. I don't want to see you try to force the right hands. I don't want to see you force, try to force and go to the body. I don't want to see him try to just force and get this superstar showcase highlight reel knockout. It's like, man, Bruce, Shushu Carrington is incredibly talented. And if he goes out there and he continues to take what's available to him, great things are going to happen. You know, I was listening, I was watching the Porterway podcast with Sean Porter and Sean Zatel on there. And these dudes said something that was very insightful about it. As the young fighter is progressing and as the young fighter is growing, 
starts out and he starts out with the basics and he masters those and he looks good and everybody's giving him a bunch of buzz and praise and he's continuing to grow. But he reaches a certain point where he starts to learn what I'll call like more advanced moves, more exotic moves. Maybe that's a pull counter. Or maybe that's the way that he's coming over the top of the jab with something. Or maybe that's the way that he's able to, to slip in this counter to the body or the way he, that he's controlling distance. There's something that was too advanced for him early in his career that he's starting to figure out. He feels really good about it. He's like, man, this is what I saw my idols do. This is what I see the pros do. This is what's going to get me the, the big fights and the knockouts and the big wins and all kinds of stuff. And it's because of that that you start to neglect the fundamentals. But the thing about the exotic and the advanced moves is if you don't have the fundamentals, they don't go. They're not the engine that drives, man. They're just, they're the, they're the flash and they might be the finishing move, but that real true fire, that engine is always going to be your fundamentals. So I want to see Shushu go in there and respect and use the fundamentals in a way that he's shown that he knows how. Just don't neglect them and get back to a man. Take what's available to you. And I imagine he's going to go out there and smoke this dude. So it'll be interesting to see what he does from it. This was a guy who was bigger. He's fought as much. I want to say he weighed in as high as 137 at one point since he's come down to featherweight. 6-0 and with three knockouts, right? Tall tall for the weight class, lanky. Like I said, he's got a good jab and he does some things well. But I don't think he's going to be able to put up much competition if Shushu comes in in shape, if he comes in with a good game plan, if he comes in and he doesn't try to force things and he executes. Maybe the guy's going to, you know, not maybe. The guy will look good for like a round or two. But as soon as Shushu starts to land something, starts to walk him down, starts to make him uncomfortable, I don't think Coolwell is going to have that gear. I don't think that he's had the level of competition and the experience and all of the things that you're going to need to be able to continually adjust and raise up mid-fight with a guy who's got the talent level of Shushu. So let me know what you guys think. Are you excited to see him back this quick? Are you excited to see him on this Mike Tyson undercard? And do you think that that's going to give him the extra motivation that he needs to come in and really, truly live up to the potential? 